Okay, today we're going to talk about semicolons and colons. Semicolons, we all know what they look like. It's the dot over the comma. A semicolon, it signals a less final pause than a period, but a stronger separation than a comma. So I'd say it's softer than a period, but stronger than a comma. It's very underused, the semicolon. Most people don't understand how it's used, so they just don't use it at all. The semicolons are used mainly to join a complete idea within a sentence and to avoid confusion in a sentence already containing several commas. So that's the first rule of semicolons is a join complete ideas within a sentence. And second, they avoid confusion. So let's look at joining independent clauses. So semicolons are used to join an independent clause when there is no conjunction conjunction being and but for not or so or yet so an independent clause if you don't remember is a clause or a sentence as such that cannot stand on its own so let's give you an example showing uh, both ways. Uh, we put the Wright brothers read books about flying. That's a clause. They dreamed of building a flying machine. So that's two independent clauses um, and with no conjunction. So with no conjunction you would add a semicolon. The same sentence, you could take at a conjunction, you could add the conjunction and, and then we'll leave you a comma, and that would go right there. So if you add the conjunction, you use the comma. If you don't add the conjunction, you use the semicolon. And that is dividing between two independent clauses. Now the two independent clauses have to have a close relationship. They can't be totally um, totally unrelated. They have to have a close relationship um, to, to um, be joined by a semicolon. And I, and I apologize, I said independent clauses cannot stand on their own, but that is a dependent clause. An independent clause can stand on its own. Um, so, um, that's, that's a mistake I made. But, um, if the clauses are not closely related, they should be written as separate sentences with a period. period. So, the second rule of using semicolons would be to avoid confusion in a series of commas usually so. An example might be 
the fans. Hearing loudly, the the band playing a rousing march and the cheerleaders. Turning cartwheels helped inspire the team. So this is a sentence that should have a lot of commas. You could say the fans, comma, cheering loudly, comma, the band, comma, Playing a rousing march, comma, and the cheerleaders, comma, turning cartwheels, comma, helped inspire the team. So these commas, can, should, some of them should be turned to semicolons to avoid confusion. So the fans cheering loudly would be a semicolon here. Playing a rousing march would put a semicolon there. And the cheerleaders turning cartwheels would be a semicolon there. And those semicolons are put in place to help understand that these are pauses and that they should um, be put placed in there to avoid confusion. Okay, now let's talk about colons. Colons are used, uh, the first one is before a list of items, following an independent clause. Um, so the an example would be festivals are held in three cities colon Chicago San Francisco and Denver. So you see the colon tells that this this information following it is related to the independent clause, um, but it's a series of uh, it's, a, it's a list, and it's important to note a colon should never, should never be used after a verb or preposition, after a verb or preposition. There are a few special situations that use colons. Like I just did there. Uh, first one would be time. We all know this one. Um, a salutations in a business letter. So, dear Mr. Blacks. Colin. And finally, to signal important ideas, like where I used it here, you could say um, caution. High voltage. Yeah. So that's your lesson on semicolons and colons.